Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another Spooktober challenge video. Again, it's too late to really count for whatever contest it's for, but I'm still doing it. This week's challenge video is to tell a spooky story. It could be something fictional or something that happened to you. I don't really know any fictional stories other than what's currently in books, and also nothing truly spooky has ever happened to me. So I figured for this video, I'd show you five spooky places in Boston. Now, in this area, Salem usually gets all the glory for Halloween. But I figured I'd show you some places that's not necessarily well known. Now the first place on this list is the Coconut Grove. It's actually a club that burned down back in the 40s. In fact, the fire actually occurred November 28th, 1942. If you see me looking down a lot, I wrote my notes on my phone. Now, on this night, there was a thousand people in this nightclub when the building was only sanctioned for 500. It's actually a little less than 500. I don't know the exact number offhand, but still, it was double the amount of people in this building. Now, this building really wasn't up to fire code safety either. The majority of the windows was nailed shut because during the Prohibition era, this building was a speakeasy. And so the, the owners did whatever they could to make what they were doing very on the hush-hush. There was actually only one door in and out too. Now what they believe caused the fire is actually um, downstairs, someone had loosened a bulb to make that corner extra like dark and private and the, it's assumed that a soldier had done that so he can spend some private time with a lady because this place was actually really popular among soldiers and someone who worked there had gone downstairs to tighten the bulb. But in the act of tightening the bulb, the bulb burst and then it caught flame on something decorative and this decorative and um, the decorative piece blew up into this like giant fire. There are differing accounts of what started a fire. Like I said, uh, there was like, one account that it was like the bulb bursting that caused the flame, but another person did say like, no, this person had lit a match while changing the light bulb. Either way, this light bulb was the pivotal moment of what caused the fire. Now this fire was so large, it did end up killing 492 people and injuring hundreds more. Now this fire was so intense that as they were cleaning up the bodies, there were several patrons still in their seats with drinks in hand, because that's how fast this fire was. Now the owner, uh, Barney Wolanski, he actually did face legal consequences for this, because there was only one way in and out, because all the windows were boarded shut and a lot of the doors were also bolted shut to keep patrons from skipping on their bill, he did face 19 charges of manslaughter. He was sentenced 12 to 15 years in prison in 1943, but he, o he only served four years before being quietly pardoned by the governor, Maurice Tobin, who had been mayor of Boston at the time of the fire. In 1946, however, uh, Olensky did die of cancer. This fire was actually the tipping point of enacting certain laws to keep this from happening again. Like there is a reason why there's a bunch of different fire codes that buildings need to, to adhere to. And unfortunately these rules are placed because a lot of people died. And we have certain fire codes because of this particular event. In 1993, the Bay Village Neighborhood Association installed a memorial plaque in the sidewalk which was crafted by Anthony Mara, who was the youngest survivor of the fire, and it stood next to the location where the club formerly stood. It has been moved several times, and it has caused some controversy, and a committee has been formed to build a more substantial memorial. In 2013, the streets running through uh, where the former club stood was previously named Shawmut Extension and is now named Coconut Grove Lane. Now it is said that the victims of the fire still linger. Shadowy souls in burned clothing have been aimlessly wandering the area and the nearby Revere Hotel. Meanwhile, an exotic dance instructor, Wendy Reardon, who previously had a studio next to the site, said on several occasions while, the, while lessons were being videotaped, you can actually see a ghostly figure dancing next to her. Not gonna lie, while I was filming the location, I could not find this plaque because I didn't realize that the plaque had been moved. And so I kept walking around the area and videotaping 
the area where the club once stood. Uh, they're doing a lot of construction at this site now and I believe there's plans to build something else on top of this site. Because when I couldn't find the plaque, I actually spoke to a parking attendant that had a building right next to where the club once stood. And he's like, oh, there's, there's not a plaque here. And, there, and he had said there was plans to build something up on top of it. So I cut my losses and just started filming the area roughly where it had once stood. And as I was filming, I saw something black move really fast towards me. And I'll admit, my anxiety was already up. I was alone in this quiet alley of Boston. And it's not necessarily a safe place to be if you're a woman by yourself. So my anxiety was already up. I'll admit that, that I just was seeing things do my anxiety, but seeing that in my mind's eye spooked the heck out of me. And so I moved on to the next location, which was the Granary Burial Ground. This is actually a well-known like tourist stop. It's right on the Freedom Trail. And a lot of people from the Revolutionary War is buried here. The victims of the Boston Massacre are buried here. Ben Franklin's parents are buried there. Uh, i um, trying to think who else. John Hancock, Sam Adams, and Robert Treat Payne are also buried here. But the most notable person that I wanted to talk about for this location is Paul Revere. His house is nearby, but he's also buried at the Granary Burial Ground. And he is the person that is said to haunt this location. There's also been sightings of different spectral figures, and when you take a picture of certain headstones, there are, like people say that they see golden orbs. It's said that the, the spirits at this location is restless because while Boston was still being built and, and things kept being changed, headstones kept being moved and there's actually a couple of like mass graves at this location and they kept moving bodies in order to try to fit as many people as they could at this location while they were building around it. We also have our own urban legend at this burial ground. It is said that the person who inspired Mother Goose is also buried here. But in the end, we, we know that that's not true because this person lived and died before Mo Mother Goose was ever written, uh, like a good hundred years at least. I'm probably over-exaggerating. But it's nice to say, hey, Mother Goose is here. Next place I visited for this video is the Boston Common. It's actually, it's a very large park that people walk through. There's actually a little, like, it's called Frog Pond. It's really just a, a place where water will spurt out from the ground during the summer and kids can play in the water. There's also a playground and there's like areas where you can like have your dog off leash. It's a really nice park. We would, people recommend that you're not in there after dark though, at least not by yourself. But before it was a nice park, it actually was a place for executions. In fact, the first person hung for witchcraft was hung at this location. Her name is Margaret Jones, and she was a well-known healer. And she was actually placed in jail while evidence was gathered against her. The Puritans also regular hanged people that they believed to be sinful, and a well-known hanging spot was actually the Great Elm Tree. It no longer stands, uh, I believe, Many years ago, a storm had actually come by and tore down the tree. So now a memorial plaque where the tree was is actually on the grounds. It's, it's ground level, you have to like look down to see it. In fact, I had a tough time finding it. You would say, I was stumped. I almost got lost trying to find this ding plaque, but I found it. And it was really interesting to see that this beautiful place once had like a really macabre history. It is said to this day that the victims of these hangings still roam the place. And apparently there have been sightings of these two Victorian sisters walking arm in arm throughout the park. The next place I visited for this video is the Omni Parker House. It's a hotel and apparently it's so notorious that this place was actually listed on several most haunted places in Boston lists. Apparently, according to this one site, it's actually Boston's most notoriously haunted building. There's an elevator that will always go to the third floor, whether or not that button was pressed, and has been doing that since an actress died on that floor in 1876. The long dead owner, Harvey Parker, is actually said to still roam the halls. Several patrons of the hotel have said that they've seen a heavy set man with a mustache in Victorian, or I don't know if it's Victorian clothing, but obviously in old school clothing, just walking the halls. 
And also, it is said that Charles Dickens, who has once stayed there, will peep through a mezzanine mirror. If you face the mirror, you can see him looking over your shoulder. This building is also well known for something other than being a spooky place. It is the home of the Boston Cream Pie. I didn't stay in this building for very long. Uh, it's a very gorgeous building inside and out, but to be completely honest, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in there because I wasn't a hotel guest and I was terrified I was going to be kicked out or arrested for loitering. I didn't want to cause trouble because honestly, I won't do well in the slammer. And the last place that I visited for this video is the Union Oyster House. It is in fact the oldest restaurant in Boston. It was established in 1826. It is more of a touristy hotspot now because it is on the Freedom Trail, but it is haunted by no other than John F. Kennedy. This restaurant was actually one of his favorite haunts while he was alive. And it is said because it was one of his favorite places, it's why he still hangs around. Patrons have said that they've seen his ghost in the dining room area and in the restrooms. I didn't see anything at this location and I had stopped long enough for a pint. I would definitely go back to this pub. It was a really, I loved the atmosphere of the pub and it was really nice. It was honestly surprising that I had never been there before. That's it. That's everything that I have to show you for this video. Let me know down in the comments if your town has a well-known haunted spot. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I guess it's ta-ta for now. Bye guys. Bye.